Nearly half the world's population, three billion people, cook their food using stoves that burn biomass fuel, like wood or charcoal. But something as simple as cooking a meal is actually a silent killer. Millions die each year from illnesses like pneumonia caused by exposure to harmful smoke from traditional stoves. An international alliance is on a mission to provide 100 million cleaner, more efficient biomass cookstoves around the world to help solve this huge health problem. But there are doubts about whether these new stoves can burn cleanly enough to make a difference and save lives. Researchers are trying to find answers, including those leading an innovative study in Ghana on the west coast of Africa. Most of our communities and uh, households in, in Ghana and actually in Africa are rural by nature and therefore they depend on wood to cook their fuel, to heat their water. In Ghana about 90% of people use biomass fuel for cooking and also for heating. My name is Kweku Pukwa Santi. I'm the head of research for Kintampo Health Research Center of the Ghana Health Service. Typically, we have households here that have mud walls and then touch roofs, and most of the houses use firewood. So you see right there, stacks of firewood for cooking. So if you walk into any of our communities, the first thing you see are the traditional cook stove. The three stone type of cooking uses three stones placed in the form of a triangle. In between each stone, we fit in the chunks of firewood. Traditionally, these are lit in the morning, usually outside if it's not raining, and mothers use it to heat water. Towards the evening, when people are cooking for their families, there you see lots of smoke from all the households because around 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., almost every household is preparing some meal. So you can see the direction of the smoke. It goes right into their rooms, where they sleep or where they, they, they sit to refresh themselves. The women who do commercial cooking with the traditional cook stoves, they get very large amounts of smoke coming out of the wood. And sometimes you see them with their kids at their back, and that is really a problem. We've recently found out that household air pollution is one of the topmost risk factors for diseases in developing countries like ours. And biomass fuel is one of the fuels that bring about a lot of household air pollution, respiratory illnesses like pneumonia, and also chronic pulmonary diseases and cardiovascular diseases. I'm really committed to this because anytime I walk into the hospital and see rural folks with various illnesses, one of them being pneumonia, I get worried. Millions of people die from these illnesses, and we have to do something about it. We have to stop it. There's something wrong with your baby. Okay, so this is a pediatric ward for Kintampo Municipal Hospital. You can see it's very busy. Around this time of the year when the rains come, we also have quite a number of bronchopneumonias coming to the ward. 
My name is Dr. Abna Yosin. I'm a public health physician with the Kintampo Health Research Centre and the Kintampo Municipal Hospital. Hello. Yeah, we are looking at the incidence of pneumonia in children with different exposures to cook smoke. The blood picture will give you an idea of what to look out for and what other tests to also do to be able to confirm or refute your diagnosis of pneumonia. This baby was admitted because of fever and cough. The mother noticed that she was breathing with difficulty and um, we actually have diagnosed the child as having bronchopneumonia. So usually you bear the chest and look out for whether there's depression on the lungs while the child breathes. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see from time to time there's depression below the lungs. Can we look at you? Oh, she's hiding the tummy. <laughs> um, so this baby is five months old. She came in last week with persistent fever and difficulty in breathing. So that's how come you see the child on oxygen because it's difficult for her to be able to breathe well without support. She's using charcoal in the traditional cook stove. She's noticed that even the rooftop of her kitchen is dark because of the smoke. And there are times that when she's cooking and she's fanning the fire, she coughs because she gets to inhale smoke. Pregnant women and their children are most at risk of diseases. And um, we think that if we are able to identify the problems that they go through and solve them, we'll be making a headway in terms of preventing maternal mortality, preventing neonatal diseases, and also neonatal mortality. So that's why we make a focus on mothers and their children. The GRAFS project is the Ghana Randomized Air Pollution and, and Health Study. The main objective of the study is to look at the impact of household air pollution on low birth weight and also on pneumonia. We have recruited about 1,400 pregnant women and followed up their children. And these pregnant women live in about 35 communities in our study area. We work with Kentampo Health Research Center, who actually, you know, does the heavy lifting. They're the ones who are out there making measurements and really, you know, really managing the project on a day-to-day -day basis. They're scientists who are deeply involved in the design of the work. The support for this project comes from the U.S. National Institute of Health. So my name is Darby Jack. I'm an assistant professor of environmental health sciences at the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University. We recruit women during pregnancy and we give them a clean burning cook stove, uh, either LPG, which is the propane or butane, the same thing you probably cook with in your, in your backyard grill, or a stove called the BioLite, which is an efficient biomass burning stove and can reduce emissions by about half. Or we assign them to a control arm to provide a good basis for comparison. During this study, they continue to cook with their traditional open fires. We have a two-pronged strategy. The first prong is to measure carbon monoxide, uh, which is emitted when things burn. The second prong is to measure small particles, and those are the ones that will penetrate deep into your lung and can enter the bloodstream. And we, it's what we think is largely responsible for the burden of disease from household air pollution. So we deploy personal monitors that measure each of these things. And what that means is that they're small monitors that that mothers can wear and that children can wear for 72 hours at a time. It estimates the amount of exposure to particulate matter and also to carbon monoxide. And then we assess the amount of particulate matter or the carbon monoxide that the woman has been exposed from it. My name is Charles Karaba. The exposure monitoring supervisor for the graph study. So we have seven monitoring sessions for every study woman in the project. So, that's it. We go to pick the Alaska and download from the field. When it's back,
We come and then you check if the woman is wearing the thing. If she's not wearing, you ask why. We set out to test two hypotheses. The first is that reducing exposure to household air pollution will increase birth weight. There's been a lot of empirical work that's shown that birth weight is a good predictor of health and, and other good things over the life course. So babies that are larger are, are tend to be healthier and wealthier over the course of their lives. And then the second hypothesis is that reduced exposure will reduce the rate of pneumonia in the first year of life. By the end of the day, we'll be able to tell whether there are any differences in the weight of children who are born to women who use either of these stoves, and then also if there are any differences in the incidence of pneumonia among their children. We're trying to have a you know a side by side comparison with clean fuels and clean cook stoves, and you know comparing the LPG to the BioLite. And from a policy point of view, the core questions here are how clean is clean enough, and then number two, what technologies will bring us there. We are not in a position to recommend any of the stoves that we have tested. That will be left with the policymakers. Ours is to generate the evidence. So this community is called Pamdu and Pamdu is one of the communities enrolled onto the study. The whole community is randomized into one of the control arms, which is a biolite arm. So all the women who are enrolled into the study in this community yeah. are using biolite. Yeah. And I have Papa Nenima. She says she's been using the traditional cook stove until she got enrolled onto the graph study. So this is a traditional three stone. You see that instead of having three stones, the wall forms a third piece, and you can tell from the wall that there's so much exposure to smoke. And I'm sure all the older children might have gotten ex high exposure to smoke because of how close it is also to the building that they live in. And this is what the woman was using until the BioLite was given to her. And she's also noticed that coughs are less frequent in her home since she got the BioLite. Who are you? <laughs> the baby is fine. Uh, she says the baby hasn't been ill since birth. Her second child in particular was recurrently ill. She's the one who gets sick most. She's had quite a number of coughs and respiratory tract infections. And the last one having been ill as often as the older ones have been. Uh, you know, most of us here use to use BioLite. She actually enjoys cooking with the BioLite because she doesn't get sore eyes after cooking. And the coughs that used to be very frequent with the traditional cook stove are also not there. Ah, uh, okay. So my baby hasn't been ill since birth. He has good, very good reflexes. He's pink. He's not pale. So he's looking generally very beautiful and healthy. Bye-bye. I would like to see in the next decade to see the burden of pneumonia come down and also to see people use improved cook stoves. This is the motivation for my involvement in the steady light graphs. I would like to see a commitment from other partners if we show the evidence that the use of improved cook stoves reduces the burden of many diseases. If a woman is using that in the community, she will have much more time to go and do some work, to spend some time with the children. I have also seen our mothers having to spend a lot of time going to carry firewood from the bush to come and light up the stove. We find girls being the ones who would typically go and gather the wood, and I'd love to see them go to school instead of spending time doing that. 
I mean, I feel that Ghana is a deeply hopeful place. It's a place where there is real poverty, but it's also a place where there's real hope. And I feel that with this work, we're helping to identify one of many things that can happen to, you know, to make it an even healthier place.